what what is the one thing that nobody really knows about you that you want to share on the Growing the Future podcast? Oh, man, man. We, can, we can have awkward silence as much as you want. No, I, I got it. I got it. This is this is my go-to answer. For this one. This is my well, go-to. How answer. can it be your go-to answer if nobody knows it? You can't have ever given it before. That's a categorically the definition. It's not that nobody knows it. It's that not enough people know it. Well, thank God everybody's going to watch in the third hour of this podcast. Are you ready for it? You already know this, Dan. Uh oh. You already know this top secret. Are you sure you want to go there? Yeah. Because it's sensitive. And, and it's it's that I play the accordion. <laughs> <laughs> That yeah. is, yeah. I don't know that. Yeah. That, yeah just, when just you sit with that one for a while. send me that, I know I just want to let that percolate. When you send me that, it harkened back to something ancient. It was <laughs> like my ancestral days from the potato famine or something of my. Oh, are you just, just checking your phone? Listen, I can't help that people are texting me. <laughs> I want well. everything shut off. Ah. No, you don't. But it's not recording. You and I have a kinship regarding this and various other things, but and I'm, but I, it almost it, it invokes a, an element of shame, Caitlin, for me because uh, I uh, <laughs> I played till I was ten, and then I fell in love with a guitar, and I oh. broke my accordion teacher's heart because I was yeah. like her recital wizard or whatever yeah well I was 10 but I was like you know pushing my glasses up in my nose and playing this big ass accordion and, and uh <laughs> but then I heard like me and dad started going to guitar lessons and I was just I became obsessed and she wondered yeah. why I lost interest in the accordion and I kind of I kind of left it behind but my grandfather played accordion my dad aspired to play the accordion I come oh, along man. the long line but, and I see you send me this video and then I seen you. And then the other day you actually shared it on social media, Yeah. but you know what the, the big long-term implications of this are. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah, I've got you. Yeah. I don't know what, I'm not sure what page of uh, salesmanship this comes out of, but. Yeah. <laughs> Which agreement now, is this? <laughs> right. Just roll with me here. Just roll with me. You are now eligible for Ag Rocks charity. Oh, man. Yes. What charity would you raise money for? Ooh, ooh. Because you're oh, going to you're gonna do your accordion thing, uh, TCU Place, December 3rd at uh, Farm Forum. We're having the Ag Rocks charity. Yeah. We're starting a yeah. foundation. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I would have to put the money towards a cause that is very near and dear to my heart. And your your you, I know I know your viewers have probably never heard of it. I have a lot of viewers. Oh, yeah, man, I know it's this is going to go viral right now. But anyways, there's a group from Regina called White Pony Lodge, and they're a group from North Central, a group of Indigenous women who started a group where they walk the neighborhood on Friday and Saturday evenings from six till nine p.m. and they pick up. Uh, syringes and drug paraphernalia and other harmful and um uh, other harmful items and um uh gang like things from gangs in the area and i would give the money to them because there's nothing that i can respect more than people who put their time behind something as opposed to money they are, I mean, they're a very lean group. They essentially just need safety vests and flashlights. And I, I try to get there as much as I can. Although Friday and Saturday evenings, it's hard to budget three hours sometimes, but it, it's a great group of people. I've, I've walked with them. Um, the group is diverse. They've expanded my ideas. It's people from the neighborhood, people from outside of the neighborhood, such as myself. Um, and it's, you know, the things you learn, the things you see when you're walking down the street and you interact with people from that community is just, you know, it's, it's, I, I don't want to say it's a selfish experience, but it is in that it's experiential learning for myself and truly understanding, uh, a different way of life. Experiential learning. Yeah. Like learning through experiences. Huh? Yeah. yeah I think that's happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. What would you say to a young woman from a different walk of life, a different set of circumstances that 
who's never been exposed to agriculture, what would you say to her about being in agriculture? I mean, there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of opportunity. Um, there's a lot of jobs out there that need people to fill them. Um, but I think sometimes, I think sometimes people who don't see themselves as the first choice for the job or the, you know, picture perfect candidate, sometimes they need somebody to hold their hand and give them a pat on the back and say, you know what, you got this, you can do this. And I'll read your resume and I'll, I'll edit your, let you practice your interview or whatever. Um, and I, th I think just, yeah, if we can just be more supportive of people out there and, um, acknowledge our bias and judgments towards people, I think we'd all be better off. Do you have an, a, a certain affinity for the Aboriginal community? Where does that come from? Uh, yeah, that, that like, yeah, kind of mentioned like my mom's work in that, uh, in that environment when she, my mom was a teacher out in Fort Capel on different reserves. Um, and I guess from a very, very young age, she kind of always taught us that we're all equal. And so I think having that kind of ingrained in us as kids means that as you go through life, um, you know, you, I wasn't exposed to a lot of racist concepts or ideas growing up in Regina because my mom kind of instilled, um, this acceptance of everybody. And again, kind of with my little sister and knowing her path and some of her early on experiences in life, you kind of become more empathetic of your, um, of your, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your, um, uh, privilege in life, your privilege, just, you know, being a white individual in an aff affluent country like Canada. So ed ed education leads to empathy. The more you understand people and the why, the way they, why they are the way they are. Uh, I think the better you treat people and understand and want to help them kind of find their way. Are you still constantly evolving on the accordion or is that something that's relatively <laughs> static? You know what, Dan, I have, I have a, a new year's resolution, Ooh. um, which includes in 2019, I'm going to make myself play my accordion at the Regina farmer's market. <laughs> really? I, have, I haven't grown the courage to do it yet. And it's already July. So half the year is over, but I'm thinking like maybe before harvest or after I'm going to like, you know, tell, tell my best friends, like, Hey, I'm going to be doing this so that they'll hold me accountable and psych me up and make me do it. And I'm going to go and sit and play on the corner at well, the Alex Carey is going to be cheering. Al around. Alex will hold me accountable. Yeah, he, he definitely will. Um, what is the thing that you're most afraid of that you're trying to psych yourself up to do right now? Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I just don't have a lot of experience playing in front of groups. So I need to get better at my stage presence and at my performance side of things. Mm -hmm. But when I play an accordion, I become really like into it and passionate and I get a really angry face because I'm just so into it. Um, some people you say rock faces. With the no, like, no, just very like, you know, it, it's not like I'm not looking at the crowd and just smiling. It's more <laughs> of like, uh, oh my gosh, this note, this sound is beautiful. So I, I, I want to work on my presentation uh, skills. So, yeah. And, and I mean, it, you know, I, it's like any new experience, right? Sitting on a street corner playing an accordion. Not many people have done that. So That's the definition of busking. That's hardcore <laughs> I know, busking. I know, I know. It's like, I have a job. I actually have a couple jobs. It would be really <laughs> striking if you did it too, because I mean, you just don't expect it. And it's such no. an ancient. No, and I, and I honestly, I do think it would make my mom's year. I, right. I think. My mom is my biggest cheerleader and especially with the accordion, like my family hates it, but my mom will just sit and listen and watch me play for hours. And it I just, thought it was great. Yeah. When you posted that thing or you, you sent me a video and you posted yeah. another song you were playing. I just, I don't know. It touched something in me. I mean, I'm, uh -huh. I'm, uh, I'm such a musical guy, right? Yeah. Well, I sent you my playlist last night. I don't know if you got you. I did. And I listened one to, of my, up to Saskatoon. Yeah. I got to tell you which ones are the best on there. Okay. You listen to it all on the way up? No. First yeah. few songs and then I got I'm bored. Like, she's a 10 minute viewer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I was going to text you and tell you, like, you got to get to a uh, warning call. It's like halfway oh, okay. through. Cause it, it really evolves. The song list evolves. It was actually interesting how, you know, it was over a broad period of time, but it's, it's a, uh, I think it's your genre. Is it not the EDM? 
Yeah. Yeah. I like it. EPM and house is like, yeah. Yeah. It works for me. 